Hey again everybody, Dr. Bolin here with our microbiology shorts. This is just a condensation of our uh, shorts that we go over in our larger videos uh, talking about microorganisms. Um, I just want to invite you to come watch our larger videos if you want a more in-depth explanation of the topic. Uh, feel free to subscribe, uh, hit the subscribe button uh, below uh, or donate to my Patreon if you like these videos. So let's get started. Our story today takes place in the magical land of Oz. And if you remember back to the Wizard of Oz, we had the Tin Man. And what did the Tin Man want? He wanted a heart, because he had no heart. No heart for Nocardia. The Nocardia Tin Man for Nocardia. Nocardia asteroides and less commonly Nocardia brasiliensis. Now our tin man here doesn't have an oil can, he's got a jar of ammonia. And the ammonia will help you remember that this is a urease positive organism. Remember that urease can cleave urea into ammonia. He's also got a little friend cat here, and the cat will help you remember that this is a catalase positive organism. And that's important because of the potential of disease, uh, increased potential of disease if you have chronic granulomatous disease. Notice that we have some branching trees back here to remember, help you remember that this is a branching filament and our purple sky because it's gram-positive, gram-positive branching filament. And these trees are growing in, of course, dirt to help you remember that nocardia is found in the soil and can get into the air, and by getting into the air, it can cause bronchopulmonary disease. And notice that some of these trees are growing oranges, and that's because they are partially acid fast. Oranges are acidic. Some of the trees are growing oranges because this is partially acid fast. And here comes a hot air balloon out of the sky. The hot air balloon helps you remember that this is aerobic. Aerobic. Nocardia is aerobic. And who is on the hot air balloon? Well, it's Dorothy, of course, and Dorothy looks really sick. Notice that she's got a fuchsia bow on. And that fuchsia bow will help you remember that this stains on carbofuchsin stain, which is part of the Zeal Nielsen stain. Fuchsia bow. She's also got, oh, this kind of went back, uh, but she's also got ruby slippers and a ruby dress, and that will help you remember that on carbofusion stain, it stains red. Notice here that our tin, the, our tin man is taking care of this little sick kid, and the little sick kid is our recurring symbol for immunocompromised. Nicardia tends to affect immunocompromised people. So notice on Dorothy, she's got a rash, and that's to help you remember the possibility of nocardia causing a skin infection, which will manifest as a skin ulcer, which can drain. She's also got a cough, and that's because of the potential of bronchopulmonary nocardiosis, which looks a lot like TB. Notice the TP behind her for TB-like symptoms. The moon will help you remember that this causes a non-caseating granuloma. Non-caseating granuloma, unlike TB, which has a tendency to cause caseating granulomas. And then notice our poor Tin Man here. On the top of his head, he's got these little holes on his hat. And that's to remind you that this can cause brain abscesses. And when they happen, they tend to be multifocal, unlike actinomyces, which causes uh, just merely solitary brain abscesses. So multifocal brain abscesses because of the hematogenous spread, and again, this happens more in immunocompromised patients. And Dorothy's got something in her basket. What is it? Ew, it's rotting eggs. Rotting eggs give off a sulfur smell, and sulfur will help you remember that the treatment of nocardia is sulfonamides, sulfa antibiotics, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. 